Headphones. Don't be petty, Glenn. Don't be petty. My name is Mrs. Melanin. And I'm Belief Mel. And we're here with episode 151 of How, How Merry Are, Are You? My name Belief, this is Yvette, and we've been married 12 years. Live in California, we got four, four kids. kids. Relationship scary, it's very necessary. We share our love of struggles. We ask how, how married are you? Every Tuesday and Thursday, shoddy. If you're listening, you're in the wedding, wedding party. party. It's okay if you want to put your hands up. You got the questions. We got the answers. It's chocolate, chocolate baby, baby story time. Check it out. Chocolate baby story time. It's, it's chocolate, chocolate baby story time. One, two, three, and... Oh my. It's chocolate baby story time. Um let's see. Uh, can I talk about Uzi this morning? Or are you gonna talk about Uzi this morning? I don't remember what Uzi did this morning. No. Last night he was when I woke up when I walked up the stairs, <laughs> he was sitting up in our bed and Yvette was sitting up in our bed. <laughs> and I was like, what is going on? And then Uzi, I don't know what was going on with him last night, but he was such the cuddler. Mm. It was like, I, I usually try to put like a little barrier between him and I, <laughs> but at one point the barrier wasn't there and I just felt this warm, small <laughs> hand on my cheek. <laughs> oh, I was like, oh baby. I'm jealous. He was, he just kind of like, he would just touch me <laughs> and I'd be like, oh. It's like he's trying to make sure we're there. Yeah, mm. it was, it was very warm. It made me very warm inside. Mm. Yeah, mine is less uh, whatever. I don't know if people are going to judge me for this, but where are my headphones? You turned I can't up hear. mine. I'm sorry, I can't hear. Oh, I turned up everyone except mine. Um, so I don't know if people are going to judge me for this, but my child is, what is he? He's 10 years old, so it is what it is. Um, a while back, I got Theo and Raya a journal because I've been trying to encourage them to you know write your feelings when you're feeling whatever or just just write you know about life yeah and theo left his journal on his schoolroom desk and i opened it <laughs> and i just opened it to like the last page and i read what it said and it said mom is the worst mom ever oh and i was like it stung a little bit, but then I was like, but I'm all also the best mom ever because I'm the only mom he's ever had. And so he doesn't know what it's like to have a different mom. I mean, he's had experiences with, you know, some of our friends or whatever, but it's like, I don't care what he thinks. <laughs> a little trash opinion. I was just like, I am not going to let that define me. I am a good mom. And excellent. These kids don't know what they got until it's gone. Hopefully, it's never gone. But um, yeah, that was it. Yeah. I was just kind of like, I'm not gonna receive that today. And I, I don't know. Maybe that's an encouragement to some of y'all out there who are mothers. But don't let these kids define what your worth is as a mother. So the question is, was it was his journal or was it the journal you guys used back and forth? It wasn't the journal. He wouldn't write that to me directly. Okay. He would never say that to me directly. So we do also have journals that we write to each other in, um, which has actually been a really cool experience as well. But it was his personal journal. Isn't it also kind of like that's what you get for looking? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Just... Yeah, I'm not going to address it with him. Yeah. Um, But, and, you know, I don't know. I feel like as his mom, I have a, a right? Yeah, am sure. I wrong or right? I don't know. You know, <laughs> but uh, you know, I think as he were to get older, I probably would not do that. Um, I probably that's when I'd probably be like, let me go and look at <laughs> seven thirty, huh? You know what I mean? And I, mm. but no, um, yeah, that's why I realized too, because I was thinking about it before in our last um, uh, chocolate baby story time when I was talking about Anaya, and I was saying how her expectation is you. Mm. And I was like, I, I clearly want to set the limits for our children. Mm. 
mm-hmm. at least my limits. Because I realize they just going to push you because they can go. Mm-hmm. But just because they want something doesn't mean I have to give it. Mm-hmm. And it reminded me of when Theo and his hockey thing was happening and we were doing hockey for his birthday. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, <laughs> I'm not playing full court hockey with two people. That mm-hmm. doesn't make any sense. And he's like, oh, fine. We'll just do whatever you want to do. You never do what I want to do. I'm like, I'm out here not working, playing hockey. I left my job to play hockey with my son. Mm-hmm. How is it not me doing what you want to do? Yeah. You know? They, I don't just, care. they just have a limited perspective. Their, their perspective is trash. They don't know. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, that's how it goes. Anyway, what we got, babe, for topics today? I got a headache. <laughs> you seem like you're in a somber mood. Yeah. Um, so we I posted a thing on Instagram. If you're not following us on Instagram, you should. Our handle is how married are you? I think it's just how married are you? Um and I was like, okay, y'all, what y'all, what's 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 going on? And it was interesting because I was reading through the comments and there were two separate people who are different who left these comments, and I will read them. Um, They said, I'd love to hear a podcast with your perspectives and advice on making new friends as an adult. I'm in a shift where I need new friends, and it's kind of daunting and scary to start with friends from scratch, even though my current friends no longer align with my life, wife, mom, spiritually growing. That was one comment. Second comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts on navigating adult friendships, making friends, nurturing friendships, and navigating hurt when you've been hurt and when you have done the hurting and navigating when a friendship is ending or ends. Um, and man, oh man, I feel like, I feel like we've both experienced a lot of this. I feel like, um, yeah, we, as adults, it's, it's interesting. It's even more interesting. And I'm not sure. I think, yeah, some of you guys said the, the first comments specifically said they are a wife and a mom. <clears throat> But I think it's different, too, when you're married. Like, that is even a whole other layer because you're like, I want adult friends, but I also want friend, couple friends that can be friends with me and my husband so we can all four hang out and then they can hang out or we can go on vacations together and our children will grow. You know, like, it's a whole thing. So there's so many. It's an organism. It's so many layers (laughs) to the thing. But I wanted, I I know that when I've done this in the past, people are like, oh, I don't like this. But I did Google <laughs> adult friendships and I recently started following a girl. Oh, my gosh. I think her name is Danielle on Instagram, who actually she specifically, I think, is talking more so about um, what is it called? Female friendships. But her name is Danielle Bay. Danielle. Her name's Danielle. <laughs> Bayard. Bayard Jackson, right? Yeah. That's her IG handle. And she has a podcast. Oh, the Friend Forward podcast. Okay. Um, But I recently started following her because she talks specifically about female friendships. And I feel like I, too, am on the struggle bus, y'all. Because when it comes, and I think that some of y'all are like, um, what did she say? They no longer align with my life. And for me, it's not so much as far as alignment, but it's me. I'm looking for specific things <laughs> because I feel like when I'm looking for friends, I'm not just looking for someone to be friends with me. I'm also looking for their children to be friends with my children and their spouse to be friends with my husband. And there are certain like things I got to figure out in order to make sure that all things align. Mm-hmm. And I think when I do it that way, it just doesn't work out. <laughs> like it's just Glenn is who he is. And Hold on. Why are you bringing me into it? Like, I am who I am. What does because, that mean? Because, first of all, let's keep it real, love. Let's keep you, it real, because I'm about to keep it real, too. I don't feel like you're as into meeting new people. I feel like you got your people, and if I'm like, hey, this is someone I would really like to build with, you're like, nah, sis. I love you so much. You don't think that's true? Am I lying? I love you so I miss speaking. much. Okay. You're not misspeaking. Same misspeaking? More. Who am I to tell you what to say? Boy, what do you love me for? I love you so much, <laughs> and I understand that you may not understand what you're saying to me right now. What am I saying? What you're telling me, essentially, Oof. is that— Can you stop blowing? 
My breath stinks. I had onion. Oh my god. He ate onion. <laughs> I ate some food. Don't blow. Please Jake. don't. Please don't. Um, I really want you to get my point. I'm gonna here. listen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dang it! You want to go brush my teeth? I got gum. I'm gonna go get you some gum. I'm not gonna chew gum on the podcast. I know, but crazy? just get the mintiness in there. Now, let me hit Montel. He got out toys. <laughs> god. Dang man. Montel, Babe, please. You keep going. You like breathe. <laughs> Mon- Montel. <laughs> Bring this boy some uh, oh, Listerine. It's not working. Do you ever get I this? I have Listerine. I have mouthwash. Okay, I'm my- not going to freaking rinse my mouth. You, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know how many times your breath didn't stink and I just said nothing. While we're talking on the podcast? Not while we're talking on the podcast, but just in life. Well, that's your problem for not advocating for yourself. Tell me. I want to know when my breath stinks. What kind of husband just lets me walk around with stank breath? What kind of wife let, makes her husband have friends that he doesn't think he <laughs> had to have time for? See, he doesn't have time for them. Can you please bring me some Altoids to the podcast room? Thank you. Oh, see? <laughs> I'm not going to adjust the whole way. Won't you? All right. I'm going to finish talking on the mic because the mic's here. Hold up. <laughs> so. I'm sorry. What the hell? I'm sorry. <laughs> listen. So anyway. So. Hey, Lily. <laughs> she Lily loves, loves me. I love you, too. Anyway, so all I'm saying is when you say. We can't see you. Scoot your body back. I'm not coming over there. Just let me talk, please. They, it's a podcast. It's for listening. You know people watch. All right, so listen. So you made me make my, lose my train of thought, babe. You said this is what you're saying, Yvette. When you're saying what you're saying, this is what I'm hearing. Right. So what you're saying, what you're communicating to me mm-hmm. is that you want me to prioritize friendships over you, my children, and my job. Come That's in. what you heard? That's what I feel, because you're asking me to value one of those things and put them in the same priority list of, as yours. That's high on your priority list. It mm-hmm. may not be high on my priority list. The the thing I don't want to do is make new friends that also don't enhance my commitment as a husband, my commitment as a father, and my in my business. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not trying to add more people mm-hmm. that are fun. Because fun feels, it felt fun is great, but it's not always ideal if at the same time um, you're losing one of the th- three things you value, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So, but go ahead. You said he is who he is. Come on in, bro. You said, you said Glenn is who he is. You could just hop right. What's that, bro? <laughs> said I said Altoids. I'm so sorry. You said some out. Toys. You didn't even. Oh, you didn't even read your. Text. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, bro. Thank you. This man walked in here with dog toys. Like, <laughs> I don't know why they need to talk about this on a podcast, but that here I come. Funny. Montel, two hours to the rescue. Um. Okay, I hear what you're saying. What I meant is that you. I don't even know. I don't know how to explain it. If you don't know, Glenn, you don't know. I do know. I know. No, I'm saying if 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 people don't know you. Yeah, if you don't, don't know me. So what, what, who well, am I? Explain me. No, 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 no. I think what you just said is very like a very valid point is your energy is if I'm going to be having people in my life, they need to enhance it. They need to like be a part of the mission. Thank you, sir. <laughs> they need to whatever. I'm taking 40s. Just just take a couple. Here, I'll take one too, just for the team. Now you're going to be mad about how I'm chewing it on the thing. <laughs> you're going to hear it on your ear. Uh, yeah, you're just... <laughs> <laughs> you're just in a season where you are... You don't have time for friendships. But no, that's not it. Stop it, Yvette. I'm not going to speak for this man no more. I'm going to let him speak for himself. Can you, yeah, Can you come speak, speak for to yourself. Me? I don't Speak care if your you. breast stinks. I still love you and want to be near well, you. Well, stop talking about it. Take it. I'm just saying, can you be mindful of how you breathe? No, I cannot. I'm trying to communicate on a podcast. Come on, let's go. 
All right, babe. I love you. Let's. Can we start over? No. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. We don't have time. Touch babe. my hand. <sighs> oh. Okay. Come on, babe. Let's do this. I'm not trying to. Okay. Okay. So. I feel so sorry for our listeners right now. The wedding party. <laughs> we apologize. Go ahead. I need. I think we need you, or I need you to explain yourself. Like I get it. You have priorities and friendships. Are necess- are lower on the priority list? Is that that's not it? No, no. no. Okay, explain. What is, what is my motto when I sign off on a video? What do I say? Protect your life and keep your network popping. Keep your network popping. My network got to pop. So the people that I'm in community with, also, I'm gonna help them get paid. That's it. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, all I'm saying is, what? I'm sorry, you had more. Yeah, I, I have more. You said that. You were talking about friendships, Mm -hmm. and then you mentioned you try to pair it with your family. Yeah. And then you went in on me. But I feel like there's more to talk about with more than what she said than trying to line them up with your husband and your family. Yeah. I'm actually going to say more about that because I think that personally, for me, that is an area that needs growth or improvement or something. Because as I pursue friendship, I have to pursue friendship for me. I can't try to pursue friendship for everybody that I'm doing life with. Does that make sense? So I think sometimes when we do pursue friendships, we try to fit them into the people that are always going to be a part of our life. But for me, as I move forward, I'm realizing that I have to find friends for myself. It would be nice and lovely if it all aligned with my family. But it's just like that's just not my thing. And I think you have even further hit the nail in the coffin on that one. You know what I'm saying? Anywho. Yeah, there's a certain criteria. I'm sorry. There's a certain criteria of individuals that I spend time with. Mm-hmm. They hold me accountable. Mm-hmm. They don't drain me. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, I don't know what you mean by friendships. Like, I don't know what you mean by that. Like, I've pretty much chosen my closest friends for the probably the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I might find a couple key players later as we mm-hmm. move on. But I know who my people are. And another thing is, I don't need to talk to them all the time. Mm-hmm. I could talk to them once a year and still consider them close friends. Do you know that? That is very interesting to me. Yeah. So, like, me and Ray rock. Don't talk that often. Maybe two or three times we go deep in for a couple of weeks and that's it. But we check in with each other. It's not like a daily thing. Mm-hmm. But, like, you and your friends, I haven't talked to you all week. <laughs> <laughs> like, what you mean you ain't talked to me all week? There ain't nothing happened. I ain't got nothing to say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hmm. We we do friendships differently, but I don't think there's something wrong with how I do it. Oh, no. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with how you do it. I think you have really solid friends. I know that, but I feel like when you were saying what you were saying, it, it made it, it was almost kind of like, I, it, because I'm married to Glenn, I have to think differently about how I pursue friendships in a, in a, a, like a team way, like husband, wife. Okay. So what I was saying when I said what I said is that you are not always easily, like you're not always um, enthusiastic about me saying, Hey, I want to have these people over so that, you know, we can meet with them. Is that true or false? Who am I? Th- what am I enthusiastic about? Period. <laughs> that's a really good question. That's not a period. That's a question mark at the end. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, anyways, I found a really interesting statistic. Um, in 1990, only three percent, and this is like it's a statistic. In 1990, only three percent of Americans said they had no close friends. In 2021, nearly 12 percent said the same. The United States is in the grips of a loneliness crisis that actually predates the COVID pandemic. Like they're not even blaming that on COVID. I wonder, I'm trying to think when social media came about, but I wonder if social media is actually the catalyst for that statistic rising Mm. over that course of time. Anyway, um, I found this really cool article, which I will link in the show notes below, but um, it was talking about some misconceptions. It was an interview done on a woman. She wrote a book. I think the name of the book is called Platonic. But she was talking about a couple of uh, misconceptions, and one of them was that platonic love is somehow less important or meaningful than romantic love, meaning that so many of us prioritize finding, like, 
the one we're going to marry and love for the rest of our life versus finding just platonic friends, like just pursuing friendships. Like we're, we're, we're more willing and whatever to put ourselves out there for romantic love than we are for platonic love. How do you, do you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that it also has a different level of value. You know what I'm saying? I think romantic love, it changes, um, it, it has the potential to change everything about you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like platonic love can change a lot about you, but if we are married, we are on, we are like partner, it's a partnership. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so friendships are kind of like, hey, what do you need from me? Here's what I need from you. It can be transactional. Marriage and like romantic love is, it. you ain't got to give me nothing for this. Mm. <laughs> this is for everything. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And some friendships aren't aren't tra transactional, transactional either. either. Yeah. But there is a lot of like, I value this person because I can just be myself around them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They can be, we can cry together. Da -da -da -da. But, you know, a marriage is going to be like, yeah, but when after you cry, you're going to go to therapy? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like that, that, And some friendships should be like that as well. Like I have friendships that are, I'm, I'm like that with, but um, I don't know. I, I don't feel like, I think, I think what's hard for me to, to disassociate is that I've been having this like um, interesting conversation with myself about relinquishing. Hmm. Say more. Okay, so I've been like, okay, you may not have the relationship you want with this person or they may not feel the role that they once did, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't have a relationship with them. Mm. You can relinquish the role and still pursue the relationship. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So the the definition of friend has changed when I was 10 to now. Yeah. Right? Because you know how quick our kids are to be like, oh, that's my that's best my friend. friend. That's my best friend. That's my BFF. And we don't even talk like that. You better tighten up. <laughs> it's like, what? Where you learn that from? Yeah. But uh, like we are BFFs and they're BFFs. Mm -hmm. and they shut up. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, um, the definition of friend is not the same. Even when I was 17, when mm. we were, when, you know, I was suicidal, 19. You know what I mean? When I you know, needed, you know, it's different seasons, yeah. right? And so what I need from a friend right now isn't a constant like, hey, man, did you, you know, it's not an every day. Hey, what you doing? What you up to? Well, and I'm not even telling all them all that business. A lot of that stuff is private information. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like I can't even communicate the same way I communicated as a child because a friend was someone I gave everything to. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Now I'm giving more to my family, my wife, and myself than I give to my friends. Such an interesting point because I recently saw some girls that I, or a girl that I went to high school with. Oh my, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, a girl that I went to high school with and she was just celebrating her birthday and she posted pictures from her birthday celebration. And I looked in at the picture and I was like, these are the same girlfriends that she had in high school, like when we were in school. And I look around often at people who have had friendships that have lasted from elementary school until like married with kids. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes feel a little bit insecure about that because I don't really have very many of those friendships. Um, especially, yeah, I don't really have any school friends that are still my friends. I mean, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I don't. Um and I'm like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> like, why hasn't anyone stuck around? Like, I literally have, like, my best friend from high school. I'm kind of like, I don't even know what happened. Like, we got to college. We went to two diff different colleges. And then she just kind of, like, stopped um, communicating with me. And I was like, what the heck? We were, like, really good friends. Anywho. Um, yeah, but I think... That if I reflect back on what I considered friendship then to now, I don't even know if I knew what friendship was. Mm. Like these were people that were in proximity to me. 
you know, but it it's like friendship now for me is a whole different um I place a different value on the types of people that I'm in friendship with now versus when I was younger and school aged. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I don't know. Even like, yeah, even college is like, y'all were just around. But what I need from my friends now is just different than it was back then. I feel like this could be a two part. I feel like thing. this is definitely a multi part um, be- because, conversation. Because when she said, she said, um, yeah, thank you so much. I can see a daggone thing. Um, someone said something about it's not the same or it's, it's, um, it's kind of no longer aligned with, they no longer align with my life. And you said something, you said no one stuck around, but maybe you the one that didn't stick around. Maybe you elevated, maybe you changed it. It's just like forks in the road. Like Mm. I'm gonna go this way. You go that way. I might see on the other side. I might not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not Mm -hmm. necessarily that no one stuck around. You know, I know. So I have friends from elementary school, mm-hmm. high school, and middle school. Middle, high school, elementary school. High school and middle school, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not so much like these people, um, I don't even know why we're still friends, some of them. You know what I'm saying? It's just they're all, that's the homie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it's just the homie. You know what I mean? Um, I, I value them. I understand they and and they care about me. They love me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Um I think that what happens though is that we we kind of we we are around in a certain for a certain reason, right? So all the people you know, you may be in a certain environment or community that exists that we coexist in the community, right? Yeah. But you went off to a whole different college, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You went to a, a different experience, you chose a path and you weren't really in the in crowd because you weren't into the things that a lot of those kids were doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't feel like something's wrong with you because you don't have friends from that age. But I do feel like there's there's levels that there's some people I'm kind of like, I'm aging out of this. Mm-hmm. I'm around. I'm just kind of like, and not to say I'm not even going to kick it with you no more. It's just that I can't like where I used to spend 20 percent of my time with you. I might have to spend six percent. You know what I'm saying? Or 20% of my year with you, I can only spend this much time with you because it doesn't add as much to the things I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. And I, and I told you that a while ago. Yeah, you did. I had that conversation. I was just like, I don't know if I'm going to be understanding a lot. Like, I don't know if people are going to be able to understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right. Because I'm, I'm saying, oh, I got to work. And they're like, well, why didn't you show up for me? Yeah. My responsibility is show up for me. And if you have a problem with that and that's going to be a problem, then we we aging out, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that in some relationships there is, like we've talked about this in our marriage about how we have kind of trained each other on how to love us or like how to, you know, coexist kind of. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, and I think that in some friendships that is a same, that is a very similar thing that happens you kind of help people to understand this is how I'm thinking and so you can either get with it or you can choose not to be around anymore um I will say this and I feel like I do feel like we probably should continue this conversation in the next episode yeah but um they said something in the article that I read again I'm going to link that and she said research has shown people who think friendship happens organically based on look are lonelier and I think that is a thing, too. I think when we were younger, it was easier. It's like, oh, we're two kids playing on the playground or we're two kids playing the same sport on the same team, whatever. We're friends, you know, like you like this sport. I like this sport. Let's just, you know, get together, run and be friends all of a sudden. That's how the kids are Mm -hmm. when we go to the playground. Oh, that's my friend, mom. Mm -hmm. I made Uzi. That's my friend. I made a friend. Mm -hmm. What's his name, Uzi? Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> you know? He'll make one up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Spider-Man? I feel like, I feel like, especially, I don't know, I'm just going to talk from my own experience. I feel like that is something that I have hoped for. Like, oh, I'm just going to bump into somebody and we're just going to be friends. Yeah. But I think the thing about it is that we have to do a better job of choosing discomfort over comfort. We have to do a better job of 
going to the other side of fear, we have to do a jo better job of taking risk. Because I feel like in adulthood, it is that. It's like the other day, oh man. So the other day I was in Costco and I saw this beautiful black couple. They were just gorgeous. They had a daughter. I think they had two kids. And there was something in me that said, go introduce yourself. <laughs> There was something in me that said, just go introduce yourself. Because I, I just like, I should do it. I didn't do it. And I regret it. I wish that I had gone up to them and said, hi, my name is Eva. Welcome to Costco. <laughs> 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 I wish I would have gone and introduced myself because who knows? That could have been the beginning of a beautiful relationship. But I will say that I had another opportunity to do that at a book um, signing or a book, Angelie's book thing. And I went up, I'm just going to say names. I went up to Chanel. Chanel was sitting there. She's a black woman sitting there. She was reading her book. And I just said, hi. <laughs> I was like, my name's Yvette. You look like me. We're kind of the only ones that look like each other here. Um, I heard you in conversation. I literally heard in conversation that she had four kids. And I was like, we should be friends. And we sat there and we talked for probably 30 to 45 minutes. And now we're in a Bible study together. You know what I'm saying? So like that that is a really good story. I like took a risk. I mm -hmm. stepped outside of my comfort zone. I didn't care if she rejected me or not. I I probably would have been hurt if she rejected me and who knows how that would have happened. Like what would have happened if she would have been like, "Girl, leave me alone." Mm -hmm. type vibes. But I took a risk and then now we're friends. Mm -hmm. I would say um, and you're right. We don't talk every day and we don't see each other all the time or whatever, but I do consider her a friend. And so I think that we have to understand that in adulthood, it is going to take a lot of intentionality. It is going to take risk. It is going to take um, vulnerability. Um, and it might even require you to get your feelings hurt a few times. Um, one of the things that the article was saying is that people in transition are easier to be friends with. Because if it's someone who has moved here from another town or someone who's traveling alone or whatever, they might be more willing to be like, hi, how are you doing? Like, what are you up to? You know, that's a lot of the easier part of making friends. And I will say that happened to me again. So I was on Instagram. Shout out to, oh my gosh, I think her name's Shayla. Oh, I don't remember her name. So sorry if you're listening to Shanae. this. Shanae. Her name's Shanae. I was talking to Shanae, or I was talking on Instagram, I think, about friendships. <laughs> and she's like, I know somebody who just moved near you. She, she you know, whatever. And um, she moved out here from Maryland, and she's looking for community with other black women or people. And so... She told me the girl's Instagram handle. I checked her out because I like to see if people are a little bit weird, you know. And you really can't tell that from Instagram, but, you know, I had a little bit of a sense. And so I reached out to her and I was like, hey, let's meet up. Last week, was that last week? We went out for a walk. Mm -hmm. And she's cool people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's a matter of putting yourself out there and being uncomfortable a lot of times. I feel like... Um, yeah, it's a lot here, man. There's so many conversations because you guys said some things and I didn't. We can't even get into all of it. Yeah, but I, I was just thinking about something. I, I I wonder because for me, I'm not looking for anything. Mm. I'm not like searching for like more blackness or so. I'm wondering like, what are you looking for? For me, yeah. So for me, I am looking for. <laughs> I am looking for more more black women friends yeah who are raising black children and i know this is probably gonna sound really bad and forgive me please don't have your feelings hurt but like my children are in relationship with a lot of interracial children and so we're having conversations and now they've been going to an on-campus a hybrid homeschool situation where they are actually literally like the only black people and so we're having a lot of conversations about hair texture and skin color, and they feel like they are the odd ones out. And I had this a similar experience growing up here in Southern California, but I also went to a black Baptist church. So at least four times a week, I was in community with other people that look like me. And our children don't have that. And so as somebody who's a primary parent, having these conversations with our kids, I am trying to find community for all of us. I'm trying to find community with women who are navigating these same conversations. And I'm trying to figure out what are y'all saying to your kids 
to help affirm them in their own skin. You know what I'm saying? So this is a this is a comp, this is friendship for families. I mean, that's why when I say I'm looking for, <laughs> I'm thinking about all the things. But even if our kids don't get along or whatever, I still want to be able to have someone that I can talk to about these things or even being nervous about you getting pulled over by a police officer or, you know, like how my kids are cute now. But what if they don't, people don't see them cute in the future? They're intimidated by because we're going to have like especially right. He's going to be a big, tall black boy man you know what i'm saying and so he's not always going to be like the cute guy that everyone sees him as now mm -hmm. and so i feel like there's just some conversations that i want to be able to have with girlfriends that i'm not able to have with everyone and i want to know that when i'm saying these things that the person that's hearing it or in the receiving end actually understands where i'm coming from you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i feel like yeah and i want them to be a believer <laughs> Like, uh, in addition to all that, and like, primarily, I would love friendships with believers. I'm just saying that, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And I think because I'm being so specific about what I'm looking for, that is the part that is like. <sighs> no, I just think that, disarming. like, you do have that, those people in your community right now. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a big depth over with person, person. So I'm like, are you going deeper with the people you have? Or going out and get more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, I don't know just like where you want to put your time. And I can also tell that you've been kind of holding back on like me meeting them. Because you don't want me to like <laughs> meet them. And then it's got kind of like me meeting the guy part of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just, I don't even know if I so much. Have a desire for that. Like that's not necessarily a priority of mine anymore. Mm -hmm. It used to be. And that was not too long ago that it was a priority of mine. Um, but I just, I'm kind of over it. <laughs> like, I do feel like I have to do what's best for me in this season. And so when I spend a little bit more time with people, then I will mm -hmm. pursue that, I think. Have but I shot a lot of people down that you brought around? You just, you haven't necessarily been open to even like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. You don't, you're not very inviting as far as when it comes to me, like meeting new people and being like, hey, I want you to meet this person. Da, 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 da. I'm trying to think about that. If I, I don't remember anything like that, but I do remember there was a couple of people that I was kind of like, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Remember those math teachers? Well, that's a whole, that, babe, that was like at least six or seven years ago. Yeah, but that was like the first time you. <sighs> All right. How married are you, my love? No, no, I can't talk about the math teachers. <laughs> You've taught in the comment section below. Have you heard about the math teachers? No, we don't want you to say that in the comment section. Well, we want you to talk about the friendship, so we have more stuff to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, those, those in the good. comment section below, what are your struggles in friendship? Do you relate to anything that I've said, or do you relate to anything that Glenn said? No, <laughs> no. I, I, I think I think that I think that. Yeah, I'm very protective mm -hmm. over me and you. And you know what? I'm not even going to front, my love. You have encouraged me to be, like, with your very, I wouldn't say rigid, um, what's the word? I'll be getting roasted on this podcast. Go Am ahead. I roasting you? No, 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 no. I just, I, I, I feel, oh, go ahead. Say what you're going to say. I'm unintentionally doing whatever it is that yeah, I'm doing. No. So what are you saying? What do I do? I'm, I'm, what am I'm I saying about? I am encouraged by your um, boundaries. Mm. I am encouraged by the boundaries that you have set when pursuing relationship or even when engaging in relationship with the people that you're in. I have given a lot of thought to um, some of the things that you've said as far as adding value, et cetera, et cetera. And I feel like it has helped me attune certain things as I pursue friendship. I've even, I, I don't know if you said this earlier, if this is kind of what you were saying, but in conversations that I've had with Julie, she has helped me to understand like realistic expectations of what the relationship is. Mm -hmm. And so when I have realistic expectations of what the relationship is, then it's easier for me to be in relationship with the person. Because I think some people are like, you know, uh, 
navigating French when a friendship is ending or ends, I think that that part is a huge piece in it is understanding what the relationship is now versus before, because some relationships they can still be, you can still be in relationships, still be friends with them, but the friend, the context of the friendship just differs or the depth of the friendship differs yeah, or changes. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know y'all. I don't know if I, we, I don't know. <laughs> this is a conversation about our experience, not necessarily anything to offer in whatever, but yeah, we, I think this is definitely, there's going to be a part two. Yeah. Okay. Um, how married are you, love? Um, I'm so married. What did I do? You've actually done quite a bit. Do you want me to tell you how married you are? I, uh, it doesn't really seem like it's valuable because it's just living. Get out of here, Lily. Um, I took the dog. What did I do? I did something with the dog. I do. What I do, babe? Tell me what I do. <laughs> so, you know what's interesting, and this is probably going to sound really bad on my part, but I told Glenn, so we have date night every Tuesday night. And um, usually, like, if date night's canceled because a kid is sick and I have to stay home, Glenn will take that opportunity to, like, work in the office. But a while ago, I said, um, babe, even if date night's canceled, I'd really like you to come home. This was like the next morning, too. You said that after a Tuesday, you were like, look. Yeah. You should have came home last night. Yeah. And this week, I'm not going to front. I was like, I'm not going to say anything. I'll just see what he does. <laughs> I know. And then I got convicted because, well, so, and basically, he's so married that he listened or he heard me and he came home on Tuesday night because the kids have been sick this week. And so he came home on Tuesday night, and I really, really appreciated that. And I was convicted, too. I was scrolling on Instagram, and there was this post, and it was like, you know, it was like a therapist. You know it's okay to repeat yourself, right? Mm. It's like you don't have to hear, like, they don't, you, you have to repeat yourself. Like, it's okay to do that. And I was like, well, dang it. And I mm. think I saw it, like, the following, like, Wednesday morning. And I was like, okay, Lord, I hear you. And then I had a conversation with a friend, and she was like, yeah, um, even the even God repeats it for Ooh, himself. Yeah. And I was like, ugh. Yeah. I was like, you need to. Sorry, Lord Jesus. I was like, you need to keep that stuff to yourself. I was just kidding. But but I did get in trouble for not bringing home Chick fil A <laughs> because you mentioned it <laughs> earlier that day. I know what I did too. <laughs> Hold on. I came home. I, you already have one. Say it for next I came <laughs> home Tuesday. I brought, I came home and the the driveway was flooded and I emptied out the flooded driveway, mm -hmm. which was very, it wasn't, because I had to sit there and wait for the stuff, wait for the water to empty out to put it back. I was trying to show you how to do it so you could put it back, but I could tell you were not interested. So I, I stayed there until all the water was done and I, and I, I put it back. But then while you were there, while I was there, Yvette just was like, I'm in the mood for some Chick-fil-A. <laughs> and I was like, are you going to order it? And you were like, it's so expensive. When you order it through DoorDash. And I was like, okay, well, that's that. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Chapter closed. He closed the And I was like, because if I want Chick-fil-A, I'm going to go order it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or but whatever. Was, I can't. But I was like, okay, okay, cool. Now, also... <laughs> Your Yvette, time is up. No, 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 me. no. Let me, let me go. Let me go. Now, now. Also, whenever Yvette eats Chick Fil A or any food like that, she always like, oh, my head hurts or I feel so sick or whatever. So I'm like, if I get you the Chick Fil A, you gonna feel sick about it. So you want me to try to kill you or you want me to try to starve you? How do you want to die? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, how do you want to die? Hey man. I can't stand okay. you. Okay, how married are you, Ben? Um, I'm still married. So for Valentine's Day, or for Valentine's <laughs> What month is the it? The way you're intended. <laughs> I've been keeping a list, okay? I've been keeping a list. So for Valentine's month, I did this thing where I wrote on hearts to the kids. And, um, 
you know, and I put it on their door every day. And I tried to, I did, the, I think I mentioned before in one of my How Married Are You's, I also did the same thing for Glenn. Well, I know how Glenn is. Glenn doesn't really like, he doesn't like greeting cards. He doesn't like notes. He doesn't like things like that because he's like, I read it. Now what? Are you what? giving me homework? <laughs> now what do you want me to do? I read this out loud in front of the classroom. So all I did, so when it was time, because I was like, you know, I honestly don't want this on our door, you know, the whole time or like for any longer. Like, let's get this off. And so uh, I was like, babe, did you read all these? And he's like, yeah. And I took them and I threw them away for him so that he wouldn't feel bad. Oh. That, you know what I mean? Because I knew he didn't know what to do with them. I knew he didn't want to keep them. It's he, not that I didn't want to keep them. I just don't know how to keep them well and where you're going to go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which, you know what, though? Like, I've been thinking about this because um, I've been thinking about Brittany. I don't know what's going on, but like. Mm. My dreams have been insane lately. Have you dreamed? Have she showed up in your dreams? It's not. It's just. It's things surrounding her. It's very interesting. But I've been thinking about how, like, I don't know if I want to throw away. Like, I will. There's some things I'll throw away, but some notes of handwritten notes and things I will keep just because. I just think that's like sweet. You know mm. what I mean? Um, and so that is something that I do want to be better at because I. I used to do that, mm. but then I got to a point where I'm like, why am I keeping this? But yeah. Yeah. Huh. Anywho. And, and that's, that's just, just how married, married we are. are.